If you've been on the internet the last week or two, you've been seeing Wordle posts all over social media. While this word guessing web game is simple, in this video, we're gonna build our own Wordle clone using Vue 3 and Tailwind. So let's dive right in. So first, let's create our Vite app with npm init Vite. We'll call it Wordle clone and select Vue. Since we're gonna be using Tailwind, let's also npm install Tailwind CSS, post CSS, and auto prefixer, and then initialize Tailwind with npx Tailwind CSS init-p. This creates a Tailwind config file, and we wanna add the paths to all of our template files into content. So this is index.html, and then all of the view related files inside of source. To actually add the Tailwind directives, let's create a source slash index.css file and add the add Tailwind directives. Finally, we can use this style sheet in our CSS by going to main.js. I won't be going over every Tailwind utility class that I add, but I definitely recommend checking out their documentation and playing around with it to see what kind of improvements you can make. So if we look at Wordle, we'll see that one big factor is this virtual keyboard that tells us which letters we've guessed. We're gonna be using Simple Keyboard. So let's install it and let's create a dedicated component for it called simplekeyboard.view. In our template, all we need is a div with a unique class. And then inside of our script, using the script setup syntax, let's import keyboard and also the styles for simple keyboard. We'll also import ref and unmounted from view. So the first thing we want to do is create a keyboard ref. Then when our component mounts, meaning that our div from our template is available, we want to set keyboard.value to a new keyboard with two parameters. The first is the class that we created, and the second are some options. The only options we're gonna change is the layout so that we only have the alphabet and then an enter and backspace button. And then we wanna create a custom handler for the on key press event, which is called when we use the mouse to click any of these keys. And then inside of our custom on key press handler, we wanna emit an event. And since we're using the script setup syntax, the way we emit events is through define emits. We'll set a constant emit to define emits, and then we'll pass in an array that has all of the event names that we're gonna send out of simple keyboard. And for us, that's just on key press. Then we can call emit inside of our handler using the typical way to send events in view. Our first parameter is the name of our event, and then we'll pass in button, which is a string value of whatever button we pressed. And that's all we wanna do inside of our keyboard for now. Let's go to app.view and clear everything out. So for starters, we'll create a div and we'll change the sizing and the display to flex columns. Then inside of script, if we import our keyboard, we can now put that inside of our template and listen for the on key press event. We can now create a method called handle input that handles our key press. Inside here for now, let's just console.log key to see exactly what's being hit. So now if we run our app, we'll see our virtual keyboard. And if we press any of the buttons, we'll see it printed. And if we hit enter or backspace, we'll see that we're also getting these as well. So in addition to having a virtual keyboard, we also want to be able to type in this game. Let's listen for the onmounted hook. And inside we want to call window.addEventListener, listen for the key up event, and then create our handler. First, we want to prevent any defaults default actions, and then we want to get the key. In order to pass the same enter and backspace values, we'll create a ternary operator that checks if the key code is 13, meaning we want to enter, the key code is 8, meaning we want to backspace, and if it's neither, we just want to get the string from the current character code. And then to make it match our virtual keyboard, we'll convert this to lowercase. At the end of our handler, we can call handle input and pass in our key. So now whether we're typing with the actual keyboard or the virtual keyboard, we can still get our inputs. So now that we have a way to capture inputs, let's actually create our game. And first we're gonna set up our state. So if you look at the finished app, we can see a high level of how this is working. We have six different guesses, and we're gonna map each of these to a component called word row. And each word row has five letters. And this is gonna be another component called letterbox. So let's open up app.view, make sure we have reacted imported, and create our state. We'll set the solution, which is the actual solution to our game, to books. Next in our state, we'll create a property called guesses and set it equal to an array that has six empty strings. Next, we'll create a value called current guess index and we'll start this off at zero. Let's create our word row component and inside the template, we'll set it equal to a grid with five columns. Inside of script setup, we want to define some of our props. We can do this through the define props method. We want a string that's the current value of our row, a string for the solution of our puzzle, and a boolean that says whether or not this guess has already been submitted. Finally, we want to create our letterbox component that will render each individual character. And this one's pretty simple. You want to define a prop called letter where the type is a string and the default is just an empty string. Well, then we'll create a div that among other things has a border, converts the text to uppercase and using a flex box, horizontally and vertically centers its internal content. Then inside this div, we just want to print out letter. So now that we have all of our components, let's work our way back up. 
inside word row, let's import letterbox. And inside of our template, we want to create a for loop for i and five. So we have five letters. And then we want to map letter to our value at i minus one. And then finally, to add our word row to our app, let's create another container div. And this time we want to create multiple word row elements. We want to say v4 guess comma i in state dot guesses. So we have six word rows. We'll set the key to i. We'll pass in our value to the current guess, the solution to state dot solution. And to determine whether it's submitted, we'll say i is less than our current guess index. Right now, if we look, we have the skeleton of our Wordle clone, but we don't have any way to type. So to fix this, let's flesh out our handle input method. So the first thing we want to do is create a function guard and check if our current guess index is greater than or equal to six. And if so, we want to return. We can get our current guess. And then finally, we want three different conditionals. Our first one will check for enter. Our second one will check for backspace. Inside backspace, we want to set state our guesses at our current index. And then we'll chop off the last character by using slice. And then our third one, we'll see if our current guess is less than five. Use a regular expression to make sure we're passing in an alphabetical character. And if so, we want to add key to our current guess. So now if we input letters, we'll see that we're able to type in this first one, but we still don't have a way to submit a guess. So if we detect an enter input, the first thing we want to check is that we have entered five letters in our current guess. And then if we have, we can simply increase the current guess index. So now if we try typing, once we have five characters, we can hit enter, but we still don't have any way of checking our guess. And the first thing we want to do is add that keyboard feedback so that we can see what letters we've already guessed. So to do this, let's add a property to our state called guessed letters, and we'll set it equal to an object with three arrays inside, one for miss, one for found letters, and one for hint letters, where it's in the word, but we don't have the correct spot for it yet. And then inside enter, we want to loop over every character in our guess, and we'll have three different conditions. The first one will check if our current character matches the solution at the same index. And if so, we'll push this character onto our found list. If the index of this character in our solution is not negative one, meaning it's somewhere in our solution, we'll push it to hint. And then finally, if it's neither of these two, we'll add it to our misses. And then to get this working in our keyboard, Let's go up to our template, find our simple keyboard, and pass a property called guest letters that equals state.guest letters. Then inside of our simple keyboard.view component, let's define this as a prop using define props. And finally, let's import watch from view. This allows us to watch for a certain reactive dependency and run a handler when it changes. So at the bottom of our script, let's invoke watch, and the first property is the getter we want to track. So we'll create an error function that returns props.guest letters. And when this changes, it triggers a handler that takes the current value of guest letters and the previous value of guest letters. Inside, we can use a simple keyboard function called add button theme that adds a class to certain characters' buttons. So first, we'll start off with miss and we'll say keyboard.value to get our keyboard.add button theme. And then since we want all of our guest letters as a string, we can get our miss letters, join them with a space. Then in our second parameter, we can specify that we want to add a class called miss. And we can do the same thing with found and hint. Then in our styles, let's say div.miss. And if that's true, we want to apply a gray background. And we also want to give it a white text. For our found, we want to do the same thing, but make the background green. We want our found styles to take precedence over our hint styles. So when we specify hint, we can also check if it's not found. And if so, apply the yellow background and the same white text. All right, let's try this out with a word that has some letters. So since we're doing books, let's say bonks. We'll see that all the values besides N turn green in our keyboard, and then N turns gray. If we refresh the page and type in books backwards, we'll see that our S, K, and B are yellow because we didn't put them in the right spots, but that since one of our O's is in the right spot, it turns green. This next part is one of the trickiest and it involves actually checking our guesses. Let's first take a look at why this is difficult. Our word is books, and let's say we passed in something like bloom. We would want our B's to match, and then we would want our O's to match. Since there are two O's in books, we also want our second O to turn yellow. So essentially there are two parts. We first want to check for exact matches inside of our guess. And then with whatever remaining characters, we want to see if they're still in the string. So to do this, we're first going to iterate through our solution 
and then check if our guess has an exact match. We'll set that letter box to green, and if it's not, we'll throw that letter into some sort of letter pool. Then when we're done, we want to loop over the remaining gray boxes and see if the value of that box is inside our letter pool. And if it is, we want to set it to yellow and then take that letter out of the pool so it can't be used more than once. So inside of word row, let's first create a constant colors and set it equal to a ref and inside we'll have five empty strings. Let's once again import watch for when the submitted value changes. And if it did, we'll make our handler async was submitted and previously submitted and the reason we're making this asynchronous is so that we can get that nice delay through a word when checking values and inside first we want to check if submitted is true and then just to make our code more condensed let's say let s equal props.solution and let v equal props.value since we don't know what order we're going to be changing our colors let's create a temp array that has five gray values and here we'll also create our letter pool and like we were just talking about, the first thing we want to do is loop over the solution and check if our values match. So we'll create a for loop that runs five times. And if s.car at i equals v.car at i, we want to set temp at i to green. This means that our guess matches the solution. If it doesn't, we want to add the current character of our solution into our letter pool. After this for loop, let's loop from zero to five again. And here, we'll first check if temp at i equals gray, meaning it hasn't been turned to green yet. And then we'll check letter pool dot index of v dot car at i Basically, we're looping through our guess in order and seeing if that value is in the letter pool. If it is, we want to remove it from the letter pool using splice, and then we want to set temp at i to yellow. And then here, since we know we're looping in order of our guess, we want to set colors.value at i to temp at i. Then to create that nice delay, we want to await a new promise that uses a set timeout. And then to actually color our letter box, let's pass a property called color and set it to color is at i minus one. We can define this prop inside letterbox.view and we can dynamically add tailwind classes to our letter box like this. We wanna set the border and background to gray if our color is gray, green if it's green, and yellow if it's yellow. Also to get that smooth transition effect, let's add a transition and duration onto our wrapper div. So now if we run our app and type in bloom, we'll see that the B matches, the L's not found, that O matches, the second O is in the wrong place, and M does not match. And then finally, we want to check our win states. And we can do this inside app.view with two computed properties. First, we'll import computed, and then we'll create a constant called one game, and we'll check if our last guess, or state.guesses, at state.currentGuess index minus one, is equal to our solution. We'll also create a value called loss game which checks if we have not won and our current guess is greater than or equal to six. Then inside of our template, we can just add two paragraphs, one for one and one for lost, and then some text that tells us what happened. And there you have it. We have a basic Wordle club. For the rest of my demo, I added some more Tailwind styles that really made it pop. For example, whenever we type, our border darkens, and then we get a nice little pulse effect. And if you want to see how I did that, the link to the full code is in the description down below. But to keep it short, I think that we have everything we need to say that we've made a Wordle clone. If you like this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I hope to see you in the next video and happy coding.